mean, not a great first impression on your new boss. Muriel is training for her new life as Daredevil. Even if Halbrand wasn't somehow dead, the horses sure would be. I mean, okay, king of a village that exploded. Well, after the way episode seven ended, I am dying to know how the Southlanders are doing. But we start this episode with not Gandalf, who drops his apple, which then Gurgi scampers away with it. Oh, just kidding. Uh, Nori takes it, takes back the apple that she gave to him and, oh, just kidding. It's actually the pop star who cleverly shapeshifted to lure not Gandalf away from the tree he was standing near towards a different tree. It's a very brilliant way to take your enemy by sup- Oh, just kidding. According to them, this is Sauron and they are here to serve him. Not sure why they needed to trick him and freak him out like that. I mean, not a great first impression on your new boss. Galadriel, meanwhile, is galloping across all of Middle Earth with a super dead Halbrand behind her. Then we cut to Celebrimbor, who is wishing that they could somehow do more with less because all they have is this tiny little nugget of Mithril. This is, of course, when Elrond explains that while he was in Casa Doom, they learned that this little nugget has infinite healing properties. And if they just pass this little nugget around, then every elf can be healed. Oh wait, he doesn't say that. Hmm. I wonder if Durin made him vow not to share that secret too. Galadriel meanwhile demonstrates the incredible strength of elf kind by leaping from her horse while wearing full plate armor. She tells them that they've been riding for six days straight without rest, which of course is a figure of speech in elf culture. I mean, if they had literally ridden six days without rest, even if Halbrand wasn't somehow dead, the horses sure would be. Elrond takes one look at this dying stranger that she's dumped on their doorstep and is like, I should not have sent you on that ship. But Elrond shouldn't feel too badly about it after all. It was Gilgalad that sent her on that ship. Galadriel tells Elrond, when I leapt from that ship, all I could do was swim and hope that I had chosen wisely. I mean, if she meant the swimming, yeah, I mean, probably wise. Either get busy swimming or get busy dying. If she meant the leaping though, probably not her brightest move. But Galadriel decided that her weekend adventure is now universally applicable to all of elf kind. I would make a great addition to Elvish turns of phrase. So when Elrond asks, what are we to do? She's like, the only thing we can do, swim. Stop trying to make fetch happen. Meanwhile, it looks like they luckily had some of Arondir's magic seeds lying around because Halbrand is totes fine. Wandering around Celebrimor's workshop where he goes full Jack Skellington in the North Pole. What's this? What's this? He first spots these weird looking rocks and he's like, I've never seen anything like them. And Celebrimor is all like, ah, yes. That is because I, the great elf smith Celebrimor, have invented plastic. Next, Halbrand spots the Mithril. Celebrimor tells him they don't have enough, and Halbrand is like, enough for what? But he doesn't need to hear the answer to that question before coming up with some great ideas. Have you tried combining it with other ores to stretch it and amplify its qualities? And the legendary master smith Celebrimor is like, combine with other ores? Mind blown. Meanwhile, back in Numenor, Farazhan is in the king's bedchamber, standing right in front of the king, talking to some stonemasons, telling them that this dude He's totes about to die. The king is like, bruh, I am right here. Farazhan continues and tells these stonemasons that they will all soon need to forge a tomb of stone, which is when they all realize that he is an imposter because everyone knows you can only forge metals. Next, we see Alicent alone with the dying king who begins rambling about something mysterious. Hang on, wrong show. Isildur's sister is sketching the dying king when he grabs her hand and tells her, I know what you've been doing in the dark of night when you thought all eyes were asleep. Damn, you don't gotta call a girl out like that. That's her business. Anyway, she shuts that down real quick, telling him, your handmaid will be back in a moment, my king. So don't get any funny ideas. Just in case though, she goes to try and find a guard, but they've decided to leave this nobody completely 100% alone with the king. I mean, I guess they're understaffed with everyone on the Middle Earth field trip. The king decides to try one more time to convince her though, by showing her his man cave. And what does she think of it? Guess we're gonna have to stay tuned to find out. Meanwhile, back in Middle Earth, Calabramor suggests making a crown of the Mithril. That way they can cure one person, but a circular form he says is ideal because it will allow the light to arc back upon itself, 
building in power. Yeah, right up until you stick a head in it. But I think Gilgalad's getting a little bit senile because he responds to this by saying, perilous are these whisperings. Galadriel decides to humor him, going along with it, saying, sometimes the perilous path is the only path. Celebrimor lets slip that Halbrand gave him the idea for the crown, and Gilgalad is pissed that some nobody is telling his master smith what to do. But Celebrimor says, his suggestion was but the key that unlocked the dam. Too soon, bruh. Gilgalad then tells him to disband the city. They're all too polite to tell him that disband doesn't mean what he thinks it means. Elrond then begs the king for three more months that he's owed that much. I mean, I'm not sure why he'd be owed. You are owed nothing. I mean, yeah, that's what I thought. Elrond is like, Dang it. Okay, well, how about you do it because I asked real nice, pretty plingies with sugar on top. And then Gandalf says, there was never much hope, just a fool's, oh, sorry, wrong, wrong movie again. Gilgalad says, it is a fool's hope. Elrond fires back with, hope is never mere, even when it is meager. Oh, <laughs> no, he didn't. Meanwhile, Galadriel is getting suspicious that even though he had the royal keychain, that dude with the Northern accent might not actually be the king of the Southlands after all. Halbrand comes in all, I can't believe little old me gets to be in this place. Thank you so much, Galadriel. And Galadriel's like, sticks and stones, love. I saved your life, you saved mine, we're square. But Halbrand is like, you did way more than save my life and I won't forget it. And I'll see to it, no one else does either. I mean, okay, king of a village that exploded. That means a lot. Meanwhile, back in the forest, the new hires start telling the boss man how powerful he is. And he's like, right on, and starts experimenting with his superpowers. But his new staff is like, whoa there, champion, that's enough of that. I mean, you're totally in charge, but we're just gonna tie you up, all right? But then his best buds, the Harfoots, create a diversion by making bird noises in a forest. Hearing this unexpected and unlikely sound, his new staff immediately goes to check it out. Or do they? Turns out that not Sauron is actually that shapeshifter again. But luckily they are totally incapacitated by the all-powerful Sadduk wrapping his little hardfoot arms around his legs. Gotta take him out. So he gets a knife to the gut. Better get him on a horse so he can ride six days and nights so we can get that looked at. Then Not Sauron takes out two out of the three of them with this big blast of power. Little did he know, that one of them can teleport and goes after the Harfoots. Luckily, Sadik still has the strength to deal a death blow by stabbing them in the foot. Meanwhile, the shapeshifter is about to unleash all hell on their new boss, who they totally worship and who is totally in charge. When, oh no, they get bumped by a pebble thrown by the Harfoots. Naturally, the only way to take care of this threat is by setting the entire forest on fire. This keeps the shapeshifter busy long enough for Nori and Not Sauron to have a lengthy heart to heart, which convinces Not Sauron to help. He says, the dark fire will not avail you, flame of Udun. Go back to the, sh oh, sorry, wrong movie again. Uh, not Sauron says, from the shadow you came, and to the shadow I bid you return. I'm good. And then Sadik moseys on over to a rock and has a seat and is like, well, time to die, I guess. The others are like, I mean, you could like carry you back. Maybe get someone to look at that. It's my time to die. Meanwhile, the Numenorians returning from their field trip. Muriel is training for her new life as Daredevil, counting her steps. Six, seven, eight. And then Sass Master Elendil comes in with, it's nine. Uh, Muriel seems concerned about Elendil and suggests he might want to take bereavement leave after they get back because it looks like the only Numenorian that died was a sealed door. But Elendil's back to his old tricks, answering questions with complete non sequiturs. You asked me why I pulled Galadriel from the sea. I mean, yeah, it seemed like you were suggesting the sea wasn't right by doing that, which is a big no-no. I claimed to have had little choice, but the truth is, I could have left her there. You definitely knew that, my dude. I could have refused to follow her to Middle-earth. Okay, not sure about that one. I mean, your queen is the one that ordered that, so. I mean, I guess you could have been a deserter. I could have stopped my son from doing so. Okay, I'll give you that one. I made the choices I did because Elendil does not merely mean one who loves the stars. Oh, oh, what else does it mean? Elendil? What else does it mean? Elendil, I just never imagined it would lead here. What was the original question? Muriel goes back on deck when Numenor's in sight, but she's got to keep up the charade that she can still see. So she puts that blindfold right back on. But then, even though, Neither Elendil nor anybody else says anything or does anything. Her spidey senses start tingling. She knows something's up and is like, Elendil, 
what is it? What do you see? And we pan over and see that while they were gone, the rest of the Numenorean ships turned pirate. Meanwhile, back in Middle Earth, Neithril makes the oven go boom. Galadriel suggests that they are pushing themselves too hard. And Halbrand goes, Eureka! The metals shouldn't be forced together, but coaxed. Here, Mithril, Mithril, Mithril. Come here, Mithril. That's a good Mithril. Come here. A little while later, Galadriel's reviewing the background check she ordered when Halbrand comes to tell her that they've figured it out. They need to make two. That way they can cure two people. Two crowns? No, something smaller. Necklaces? Anklets? Bracelets. Come see for yourself. Not until you tell me who you really are. And then throws her evidence on the ground where no one can read it. There is no king of the Southlands. But you told me there was. You told me I was him. You lied to me? The last man to have that keychain? He died a thousand years ago. I told you I found it on a dead man. It looks like Galadriel contracted whatever it is that's affecting Gilgalad and Elendil because she responds with, no, on the raft, you saved me. You convinced Muriel to save the men of Middle Earth. Halbrand is starting to get a little bit worried about her mental state and her sanity. Uh, no, that was you. I wanted to stay in Numenor. Galadriel's having none of it. Tell me your name. Not wanting to freak her out, but she is clearly losing it. Halbrand uses the Mithril strategy to coax her back to reality, explaining that he didn't know where the keychain came from. I mean, when she told him that it meant he was king, he wasn't super excited about that idea. He just wanted a simple life as a smith. But when she insisted that she needed his help, he felt like he'd be letting her down if he did. Oh, just kidding. The master manipulator and deceiver is like, you got me, I'm Tote Sauron. So you wanna collab, bestie? Galadriel starts really freaking out then. I'm not your bestie. Your bestie is Morgoth. Nah. That Morgoth guy is a dick. You deceived me. Girl, when? I straight up told you I did some bad shit and you were like, what ifs, homie? Let the past die. So queen, you wanna collab on saving Middle Earth or what? Save or rule? Mm, both? Both is good. Never. You know I'm an elf supremacist. So Galadriel goes back to Calebramor and is like, I kicked that lowlife Halbrand out. We don't need his kind around here. Calebramor is like, we still gonna make these rings though? Oh, most definitely. How else are we gonna cure the plague? But this has gotta be for elves alone. But the dwarves have a buttfuck of mithril. If Halbrand tells them that all they gotta do is mix it with gold or silver, doesn't matter. Also, you gotta make three, cause I want one too. All right, but then you gotta contribute to this project. How about that sweet dagger your brother gave you? Ugh. <sighs> I guess. Meanwhile, the Harfoots have got themselves a nice shire going, which naturally means it's time to move on to somewhere less nice. Nori tells not not Gandalf that she's had enough adventure for a lifetime. But then Nori's family kicks her out and is like, let's get back to adventuring. And Nori's like, yippee, so long suckers. But first she does a secret handshake with her dad. Meanwhile, back with the elf nationalists, they're ready to start using the gold and silver from Galadriel's dagger. No need to separate out those metals, not when you've got experts. Just chuck the whole thing in the pot, add in some mithril and baby, you got a stew going. But uh-oh, Elrond remembers the random scroll that Galadriel left in the water. He races back to the workshop to ask Galadriel why some family tree was in the water, but he's too late. The super awesome rings of plastic have been completed. And the showrunners couldn't decide which would be more epic to zoom in in or to zoom out, so they went with both. And lastly, kicked out of the nice elf city for trying to rise above his station, poor refugee Halbrand is headed back to the Southlands to try to make the best of it.
And that's the end of season one. I have so many questions that I need answered immediately. Like what happened with the Southlanders? How are they doing? Did Isildur's sister like the King's man cave? Will Nori realize that going off with a perfect stranger and leaving her family behind is not a good idea? Will the scrappy Halbrand and Adar join forces to rise up against the authoritative and oppressive power of the elves? Will Galadriel remember that she has a husband and that she should go look for him? Will all of elf kind die because they only have three rings? Will Disa learn the secret of mixing mithril with metal and create rings of plastic for herself so she can rule them all? There are just endless possibilities for where the show could go in season two. And I, for one, am itching to find out what happens next. Let me know in the comments down below how you felt about season one. If you are also dying to know what happens next, let me know your predictions for what will happen. Whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays. Other random times will be up on Saturdays, so like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.